so hello 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 very exciting for me um look what i've got my hands on it's the new army painter speed paint mega set the 2.0 the new improved reformulated speed paints um really excited to get my hands on these so uh let's open it up and see what we've got so there's uh the Army Painter Painting Guide, which is interesting, was uh, what wasn't in my original speed paint set that was missing, so I've got this. So uh, there you go, there's a nice little guide as to how to paint. Um, some lovely stickers, look at that, very nice, lovely stickers. Beautiful. How to speed paint the leaflet. We've got a brush, this is the, um, the base coating brush. I like Army Painter brushes, I think they're pretty good actually. So that'd be good. And we have the paints. There's 50 in there, I believe, um, which includes the three new metallics, which you'll be interested to see how they work. And uh, it also includes their mixing medium, but that's a useful thing to have anyway. So here we are, we've got the paints. So I'll get them all out and we'll see what they're like. So I've had them out um, just very quickly breakdown they've got four five six seven eight they've got nine sort of greenish tones that seems a lot of greens to me but we'll see what the differences are there's four sort of mauvey purpley tones um three pinkish kind of tones we've got five red tones one of which looks very browny red but we'll see how that turns out there's four five browns of some description um, one, two, three, six blues. There's five yellowy orangey tones. There's three sort of greyish into black tones. We've got five tones that look like there's variants on skin tones. We'll see how they turn out. Um, there's the three metallics. They've got broadsword silver, talus bronze, and hoplite gold, and also a bottle of the speed paint medium. Um, which is a useful thing to have anyway. So I'm going to get these onto pieces of paper, a piece of white paper, and we'll see how the colours turn out. Right, so I've been playing around with the, the colours, um, and I'll go through them one by one so you can have a look. So we've got the Carmine Dragon, Slaughter Red, Bright Red, Poppy Red, and Dusk Red. So those are the reds. Now, they describe them as a brilliant pinkish red or well, carmine dragon is a very brilliant red obviously slaughter red is a deep red yep don't argue with that um the bright red is a reddish orange there is an orange tinge to it definitely poppy red they call a brilliant red again i can't argue with that although to be honest is there much of a difference between carmine and poppy i'm not sure dusk red is a deep um kind of brownish red um, yeah and then we move on to uh, Moon Lake Coral which is quite a strong it's a purpley red which is the way they describe it that's fine um, familiar pink is is just that it's a it is a vivid pink murder scene it's quite dark it's very brownish reddish purplish brown kind of kind of like a scab color I guess which, you know, that works. Moving on to the purples, or what I thought was going to be the purples. Please excuse my spillage there. Purple Swarm, nice, proper, bright, deep purple, um, which is what was missing from the original colours, I think, from the, um, the speed paints. They didn't have that nice, proper purple. Periwinkle Purple we've got, which is very blue. It's a sort of a purpley, bluey, greyish quite dark whether i'd call it purple or not or a shade of blue i don't know um royal robes which i assumed was gonna be purple is actually quite a nice <clears throat> quite a nice bright blue color um so a little bit out of order in terms of the purples but that's quite a nice blue moody mauve is a very deep brown dull mauve color exactly what it says in the tin so you've got a nice spread across the purples those three there um, so moving from Royal Robes Blue there to Magic Blue. Magic Blue's got a greener tinge to it. 
Raging Sea is a sort of deep sea green kind of t- deep turquoise. Caribbean Ocean, very similar to Raging Sea. Very slightly lighter, but is there enough of a difference there to warrant two different colours? I'm not sure. I don't know. Tidal Wave is again a nice sort of ultramarine blue. Slightly greener than Magic Blue. But again, like with these two, is there enough of a difference between those colours? Not convinced, I don't know, but yeah, they're both nice colours. Well, Beowulf blue here, which is a very deep blue, deep sort of bluey grey colour, maybe slight hint of purple in there. Um, but yeah, that's a nice colour. I can see that working well. And you've got Tyrian navy, which is very, very blue, deep slate grey, sea green. It's a nice colour. Um, I'm not sure how I'd describe it. It's kind of blue, kind of grey, kind of green, but yeah, that's sufficiently different from the other colours to warrant it being a separate colour in the set. I like that. Let's move on to the greens. There's um, a lot of greens, and I'm not convinced by the need for all of them. So we've got Charming Chartreuse, which is a very sort of nice leaf green, yellowy, sort of natural leafy green colour. Moving on to Algae Green, which is pretty much the same colour to be honest maybe slightly less yellow but once again is there enough difference between those two to warrant there being two separate colours in the same set I'm not convinced um, Forest Spirit very nice natural green um, a nice leafy green yeah I can see that that might work nicely um, Shamrock Green is a very bright St. Patrick's Day type green yep I can see there's a, a place for that Ghoul Green again it's similar slightly less yellow to it but the difference is subtle gilly dew slightly brighter greener color than perhaps the chartreuse and the algae green but they're very similar a little bit greener orc skin is it's a green it's a slightly bluer green than say the ghoul green and the shamrock green yeah, it would work for orc skin, I guess. And then we get onto the much darker colours. A gunner camo, very, very, very deep green. Possibly almost like a... Almost like a German field grey type green, I think. Or maybe burnt moss might be more like that. That's very dark. That's more of a grey than a green. So that might be useful for a, a kind of German field grey. So you've got lots of shades of green here. Some of which um, are a bit more olive. I guess the forest spirit green is quite a nice olive green for some sort of Second World War modern uniform type colours. Maybe even the charming chartreuse might be good for some, I don't know, maybe Japanese uniform green. Um, Gilly Jew is again an almost military kind of green. So there's a big spread of greens, whether you need that many in one set, not convinced. But there you go. So moving on now to the brighter colours, we've got Maze Yellow, which is a very vivid yellow, lovely, very nice. Um, Ancient Honey, which has got a sort of more orangey, warmer, brownish honey tone to it. The, the name's quite a good name. Definitely a difference between those two. Um, ochre Clay is very much a yellow ochre, browny, slightly greeny, very deep yellow. Um, possibly even good for a khaki type color that's nice nuclear sunrise is a is a very vivid orange just as you'd expect really and coming on to fire drake that's more of a brown than an orange it's got an orangey tinge to it but very much brown and not very different i've got to say from ruddy fur which is one of their brown colors ruddy fur fire drake probably interchangeable to be honest Satchel Brown is a nice dark woody brown that works. Desolate Brown has got a greeny tinge to it, that's kind of perhaps a nurgly type of colour. That's quite nice. Brownish Decay is, yeah, olive, dark, olivey, browny kind of colour. Similar to Desolate Brown, but more brown than green, I guess. And then Bony Matter looks quite dark on here. I would imagine that would shade sort of a bony type skeleton type figure quite well but it 
just a little bit darker than I would have expected. But yeah, no, there's a good spread of the browns and the oranges there. Like I said, ruddy fur, fire drake, are they sufficiently different? Not sure, um, but certainly ruddy fur is a nice chestnut colour. That would work well for horses. Satchel brown is a nice general sort of dark leather brown. Yeah, so there's some useful colours in there. Right, now moved on to what looked like skin tones um, or those kind of vari variety of colours. We've got noble skin, which is a very dark brown, almost seems to have a slight greenish tint to it. It's a very dark tone, um, which is obviously intended for sort of African type skin tones. Um, I'd need to try it in a miniature to see how realistic it is, but well done Army Painter for doing a skin tone and calling it a skin tone that isn't actually a generic European Caucasian skin tone. So yeah, fair play to them for that. We've got Goddess Glow, which is a, a very, very pinky, browny color. Um, again, it would work potentially for a skin tone, a maybe native North American type skin tone, possibly. Um, certainly non-European type skin tone um, so yeah that would work warrior skin um, that could work for potentially like a Mediterranean type skin tone possibly Arabic or Southeast Asian skin tone um, so again another skin tone that's not Caucasian um, it's a nice colour I could see that would work peachy flesh is a very ruddy skin tone that would work for tanned European skin I think um, quite nicely um, possibly East Asian skin tones as well and look at aged hide um, it's very very ruddy I can't see that being a very healthy human skin tone for anyone but it's a kind of interesting ready browny kind of colour um, yeah certainly not a skin tone I don't think Moving on now to the greys and blacks, we've got Ashen Stone, which is just a nice generic neutral grey, works quite well. Um, that thinned down could work for a white shader, I think. Um, Battleship Grey is a very, very bluey grey, almost like a Space Wolf, Space Marine type grey, I think. Again, um, diluted down, that could again be a nice shade for a white um, if you're going for a sort of brighter, bluer type colour. Then we've got Occultist Cloak and Grim Black. Um, both very dark. Occultist Cloak, cloak is a very dark grey. It's got a slight bluish tinge to it, like a very deep slate grey. Um, but very, very dark. Grim Black is is black. It's got a very slight sort of bl bluish, possibly greenish tint to it. But it's definitely a black. I think that would work well. Um, but then they've already got the grim black anyway. Um, I may need to do a comparison with those. Now moving on to the interesting ones, these metallic um, speed paints. Not sure. I mean, they, they look like decent metals. There's, I mean, they're thin. They're very, the consistency is very thin. So you could paint them um, in very thin layers. You got a silver, a bronze and a gold. So broadsword silver is kind of like a gunmetal gray color. Um, on paper, we'll have to see what it looks like on a model. Um, Talos Bronze is a very reddy bronze colour. Um, and Hoplite Gold is is a sort of a mid-gold. Um, no great surprises there. So on paper, yes, they are metallic. Yes, they're thin. Yes, they seem to cover well. But we'll see what they're like on the model, shall we? But there you go. So that is all of the colours tested on paper. Right, so now we're going to test the old legendary, everyone knows it, reactivation issue with these paints. Um, what I've done is I've taken one of the, um, the packaging from the pack and I've primed it with Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Now I know they recommend using these paints over a white or their ash grey but I always tend to use Skeleton Bone as my, um, my, my base, my background to work on. Um, I just prefer it. Um, but it's an Army Painter primer and we'll see how it goes. Now what I've done, I've used three of the old 
um, original speed painter paints here. So I've got their blood red, orc skin, and grim black. Um, and from the new set, I've got slaughter red, which is the nearest to their blood red. I've used their orc skin, which is the same color, um, the same name. I've used their grim black again, which is the 2.0 version of the same color. I've used just chucked in royal blue and satchel brown as well, just to give a test to see how they work. What I'm going to do is paint over them with Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Um, I'm using it straight out the pot. I'm not diluting it at all. I'm just going to paint over the top and we'll see if we get any kind of um, reactivation issue. So first of all, I'm just going to paint over the, the original paints, the version one. Um, just to see what happens. So get these covered over and just see if we get any other color leaching through. I can always see, already see with the red, we are definitely getting quite noticeable reactivation there. Um, and the others, not so sure, it's just a see what's going on yeah there's some blue coming through and the green is leaching through as well so that I expected because that's that's the known problem the known issue with the original versions of these paints so let's see if the reformulation has had any kind of effect at all um, so let's start again let's go across the, the red and the green So far, so good. Um, that's looking significantly better, which I'm glad about. I was hoping this would be the result. Yeah, there seems to be no reactivation going on there at all. Well, obviously you can see some through, but that's just it showing through the color anyway. Um, but let's try on the black and the blue. Again, we seem to be free of any reactivation and try it on the satchel brown as well. Okay, so, so far, so good. Let's just see if I can actually try and force the reactivation at all. So I'm really working onto, into that red there. And do you know what? There's nothing leaching through at all. Try again on the green. I mean, you can even see I'm scrubbing the paint off the green and the green just staying exactly where it is. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's try these ones. So, no, I've managed to paint over all of those colors and I can't see any leaching through. Whereas if I come back to these ones, the, yeah, look, that's, the, I mean, the red is particularly noticeable with the old colors. Um, so it would appear, at least initially, other than, yeah, no, it would appear initially that they may well have fixed this reactivation issue with the new paints. But we'll come back once it's dry, see how it works, and then see if I can actually force a reactivation at all. So we've come back now, the paint is dry. Um, you can see definitely problem with the red, the original red, we knew that, that's, that's what happened. It's leached right the way through. It, it, yeah, that's that was that's the issue. That's what we were talking about originally. On the green, I've worked it slightly less hard, but definitely there is some green showing through there. I don't know if you can see it properly on the, um, on the camera. Let's try and get some better light on the situation. Is that you can definitely see there's a shadow of the green coming through. 
definitely and again with the black here there, there is some that's weird it's kind of almost bubbled through it's almost like it's it's risen up through the paint but yeah definitely appears to be some reactivation going on there as well but we knew that because this lot here this side of the line they're all the old paints and that was the issue that was supposed to be addressed um, moving on to the new ones now yeah you can see the trace of the paint underneath showing through but that's because i think the coat over the top is a thinner coat so yeah I, it's, um, there's no evidence i think of the color actually leaching and reactivating except interestingly on the black it does seem to be a bit of bit of um, reactivation and soaking through the paint top coat going on there it might be that i hadn't let that paint dry well enough i don't know but what i'm going to do i'm going to come over this now with a second coat just and see if that's going to come through because i do know that with the originals that was an issue no matter how many coats you put over you just could not hide the stuff it would come through and it would come through and it would come through at least that was my experience with it let's try with the the new ones here okay so we're back now um yeah definitely <laughs> definitely it's still there you can still see what the problem was with those original speed paints yep the red is still coming through now on camera i can see slight traces of green coming through that second coat um or whether you can see it on camera or not i can in real life just see a little bit of green coming through it wouldn't necessarily be a problem i think um so the green wasn't issued there's definitely some more leaching at the black the original black coming through there as well now with the other colors it's uh no there's no reactivation of that red none of that green um none of the none of the black none of the blue it's some slight reactivation there going on with the satchel brown so um it would appear that possibly some of the colors may still have a bit of that original reactivation going so yeah, it would appear that the reactivation issue, um, certainly the colors I've tested initially, and bearing in mind this is just a really quick smash it out test, um, it would appear that the reactivation issue is probably on the whole fixed. Um, interesting, that satchel brown, I'm gonna have to have another play with that and see what's going on there, be a bit more scientific with the test. But yeah, it certainly appears that the main problem or the main issue that was supposedly gonna be fixed has been. So yeah. That's good. Um, I will come back with some other videos um, doing some slightly more exhaustive and perhaps more scientific tests with these paints. But initial initial indications are, yeah, promising. They look good. I'm happy so far. Um, yeah, Army Painter would appear not to have let me down. My faith in them is, is still strong. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. And as I said, do do uh, do check back in because I will be doing more and more exhaustive tests of these paints. But thank you very much and bye for now.